Live from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live for day two of coverage of .conf 2015 Splunk Conference, hashtag SplunkConf. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the silicon noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Christoph Gingo, head of security at Swisscom. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for spending some time. I know you're super busy and um, we love talking about security. It's a hot topic at the show and in the industry. Um, so it's really been one of those things where we keep on chasing the bad guys, they're penetrating, perimeterless security, these are the buzzwords that are being kicked around. Um, what's your uh, assessment of the current landscape of the security market? I mean, you know, Swisscom, you guys have a lot of infrastructure, I'm sure you're under attack every day, but what's the current state of the uh, security market? So what we see is a shift from uh, the vandals, so the script kiddies, going through, let's say, organized group, criminals, and then what we see is more and more sophisticated attacks, but we still have a lot of noise with the attacks, so we speak about a million attacks a day on the complete network, and we assume that there's some of these attacks are already get So ones you don't see? There's ones you don't see, those are millions that you know about. That's you know, exactly. <laughs> so uh, so we, one of the, what changes from decades to now is that we stated that we assume that we all already breached. So this gives a, um, quite another angle to the situation because we say we're not focusing on prevention anymore, we focus on detection and intervention. And with the detection means that you have to have a good view on the data. And talk about the data because this is the key thing. Because attacks can come from anywhere, there's also spoofing packets. Yes. So you got to understand is the data, what's underneath the data. So take us through the levels of of analysis, is it the network mostly, is it the yes. applications, is it phishing, all the above? Um, as a telco provider, we have different networks. We have the production environment, so the wireless services and the, the wireless services, and we have our internal network, and we have an outsourcing branch. So in the carrier, in the carrier network, we see a lot of things with the mobile devices, so we track all the antennas and uh, save the metadata. And we do some analysis on there. So we have uh, done some analytics on even if iPhone is more secure than, than the Android ones, and that's not the case. So we have uh, up to 50% Android, which have malware on it, and we have iPhones. So what we are doing is we collect just the metadata, and we just combine the metadata with uh, threat networks that we know, so botnets and other stuff, and we compare it and we do some, get that value out of it to have a good idea on Let's that. Let's talk about the iPhone thing for a minute, because that's a misconception for market, marketing purposes, is that people think the, the iPhone is more secure than Android. Let's elaborate on that. It's, it's, not, it's not what we have seen so far. So th the amount of malware on the iPhone is totally equivalent to the, the Android malware. So it, there is no, yes, it's more secure or less secure, it's, it's equally uh, shared between both. So the last thing, if you want to buy a, a, a good phone which is safe, buy a Nokia, an old one which is 10 years old. So it has no possibility. <laughs> it's, not a, it's a dumb phone. Right? It's, it's, it's a dumb phone, not a smart phone. I thought you were going to say a Microsoft phone. <laughs> it, no, 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 not a Microsoft phone. <laughs> but it's, uh, you can buy an, an old one. And with the early ones, we have some malware on that too, but yeah. it's, it's quite in a half percentage. Well, this um, is interesting. You bring up the phone, the, the phone, Nokia phone, I call it joking, an old phone, but it's, you know, it's not a smartphone. That speaks to the applications now playing a critical role now yes. in the attacks, it's not just packets. Yeah. Talk about that comparison, what are you seeing on that? More network attacks, more application um, attacks? Do you guys have that data? And how yeah, much data do you guys grab? So um, we grab up to five terabytes a day for the, for the networks and just do the indexing with Splunk. The point is that we, we have both. It's no longer an easier or attack, it's a combined attack. So when the attacker comes, he tries to do some network attacks first to see just to do discovery and then goes try harder and go to the application. We had a lot of application attacks, especially uh, when you go now cloud container-based stuff, where you have the web application stuff. This is, the I think, the future that we'll see a lot of more attacks in this area too. 
And talk about the, the uh, approach to security. Dave Vellante, uh, my co-host in theCUBE, who's not here, We've, we do a lot of events and we always talk to the folks about security, and, and it comes up as, the, the rhetorical question is, is security a do-over? Meaning with uh, the changes in the architectures. Yes. You have kind of no perimeter anymore. Yes. You have now API-based calls yes. and apps, but you have pre-existing security. Yes. So how, do, how does, do companies and how do security folks evolve the security paradigm? What approaches are yes. you taking? So. What are you guys, how are you architecting that? Yes. Can you share some insight into that? So, yes, uh, we can share the insights on that. So, one is that we go from uh, a prevention phase to a more detection and innovation phase. This is just on log management stuff, but knowing that this is happening, we try to design the system as secure as possible. So we started initiatives on trusted computing, we started initiatives on how to build secure systems, knowing that they are that they were breached in terms of checksums, in terms of runtime uh, monitoring and further on. So if you think about all the systems, they have a chipset. All the systems have a BIOS, an operational system, database, and application on top. So we go from top, bottom to top. In terms of, we know that what type of hardware we have, we know what type of operating system, and we check the operating system mm -hmm. against some va predefined values. But we started it one year ago, and it's, it's quite good an approach because it reduces the amount of traffic that you will have to uh, inspect with, with uh, monitoring systems because you know that you are breached at one certain point in time and you can do a self-healing mechanism. So we've got So into you this assume direction. the breach. Yes. You look for the breaches. Yes. Versus trying to spend Avoid time it, uh, uh, putting up yeah. little roadblocks and Bob wire, whatever tools you would use. And stress communications. <laughs> <laughs> it's like building the dam that always breaks, you know, the beavers. But anyway, so I got to ask you about the um, the collaborative security model you've been yes. talking about yes. here at the event. Yes. Um, what is that about? So uh, last year at the DotCon 14, we spoke with the, the executive board of Splunk and tell well. The problem we have now is not the ingest of, of data, it's just the ability to execute. Because of the industrialization of, of IT, what happens is we have silos. We have silos for the network guys, the database guys, the application guys, the endpoint guys, and they're not speaking with, with each other. So we'll face the situation that you have isolated view on data and said, Okay, so we went through, down the path, through SIM solution and Splunk and says, well, Splunk is the central nerve center for us to have all the data at one point. But it will not help as soon as you have to inter Im immediately execute and do some remediation because you still have the silos. So you have to go to the network guys trying to tell them something. You have to go to the endpoint devices. And what we are now doing is introducing over Splunk some kind of abstraction layer, which helps us to integrate this back channel quite easy. So Christoph, that's a nice segue into something that you've published um, directly, which is, which is this concept of a collaborative security yeah. model. I wonder if you can uh, elaborate a little bit more on what that's all about and why is that so important at this point in time? We think that there is no one company who can help us solving our security issues. And what we have seen in the past is that we had a huge amount of time and money to spend to make the systems interoperable between each other, so the integration part was quite heavy, and it, it was very slow. So as soon as we had a new security vendor, put the system in, bring it up, make it automatically configurable, and do the thing, it took a while, it took six to 12 months. So we are no longer in the position that we can spend six to 12 months in, in order to execute new stuff. So we have to go to another pass down. The another pass down is to bring the responsibility back to the security vendor in terms of that he's, a, he's also responsible for doing the configuration, he's also for the log management and all that stuff. So Splunk started years ago with the technical adapter. So we just extend the technical adapter not only for ingest traffic but also for uh, egest traffic in terms of configuration things that we can do. And with, there is at the booth here at Fortinet, you can see a demo, so we have a prototype running on that. And you can easily go down, you see an attack, and you can fire up a firewall rule without, with, with, within three, click, three clicks. That's, that's the thing we want to do. 
It's, we want to broaden with all this heavy load of, of, of configuration, integration, all stuff. We want to be smart and quick and right. fast. Which also begs a question on the machine learning piece, because as the volume of the data is so much larger, yes. uh, it continues to grow, yes. and as you said, and you have to presume that you've already been penetrated. Yes. So how do you, you know, how, how, what's the, the role of machine learning and how is that going to change the whole security landscape? I think it, it will be one of the most critical aspects in the security to have this machine learning in place. So move away from the static attacks to behavior-based attacks. And that's about the silo. At the moment we were looking at static attacks from network, operating system, databases, and right. so on. Now we collect the data and see what happens. Was there a breach? Was there a lateral movement? Was there additional malware, malware downloaded? Was there exfiltration? So we look at the whole topic, and machine learning is, is an important part of it. So we have the pieces, yes. Right. And when you're looking at the behavioral, th that's really, you're just looking for things that are out of pattern, right? Out of phase. It's really yep. kind of pattern recognition and things that just don't yeah. match, or is, there, is, is behavioral recognition another level down? Is that a deeper yeah. level and just kind of simple anomaly detection? So, for my opinion, pattern-based detection is, is, is just, just screwed. It, it did not work for the last 25 years. It will not work for the next five years. Um, what is important is that you need to collect the pieces together in terms of small puzzle pieces to make the picture. And you have to combine it, and we'll see three areas. We see everything what is identity. So, I mean, try to get credentials, try to log in, try to manipulate, get some privilege escalation. So far, this is everything about identity. Then, in the, in the, then we have the network aspect. The network aspect just shows, is there an anonymous, uh, anonymous, anormal traffic, sorry for that, uh, you see in the, in the network. So is the traffic, is the behavior of the system still the same as it was half a year ago, one week ago, and, and so on? Or do we see anom anomalies here? And last but not least is the application behavior. So the application behavior is that it is it is the application doing the same thing over and over again? And what we have seen there is that, especially in the endpoint, when you are, have infected endpoints, they will try to exchange some libraries in the, on the endpoint, and suddenly you have extended features to that application. So suddenly you have an additional open port, suddenly you have an addition communication, which is not, it's either easy to detect or really hard to detect. What we have seen so far is sometimes of very, very bad things that they place the data in the flags of the TCP packet, so we call this passive cover channels. So it's very hard to detect this type of stuff. You really have to drill down to the protocol very, very hard. And there is obvious things like they're using Tor protocols to exfiltrate data. So these are the easy things. So we see a lot of, we, we have a vast area that we have to cover. Awesome. So talk about, um, the role of IOT and the role of the carrier because IOT opens up a lot of transit yes. and peering potential opportunities yes. for you guys. So yes. I'm sure you're getting a lot of interest, yes. but yet those are packets that go yes. to the network too. Yeah. And they come from the edge of the network. Now devices could be wearables, yes. phones, machines. Yes. So Security, so privacy, all this stuff is all wrapped around. Can you comment on all those features yes. relative to IOT? So one uh, another paradigm is that we said the perimeter will be defined by the things you own or you rent, depends. But it's no longer the, the situation that you say, I have an internet access box, a VDSL router, and there is a bad guy out there and I have my corporate network or my home network inside. So you have the wearables, you have all this stuff, the metering stuff and all that. And we're actually working with companies on, on how to build a secure controller in terms of knowing what are the, the, the yeah. devices which are in, so the yeah. chips and the memory and all that stuff. And especially in encryption, encryption becomes up m as a topic, <laughs> as, a, yeah. as a real hard tough topic. And we're actually evolving in, in this area and try to find out a, a feasible way of, of doing it. Encryption will by itself will not solve the problem, but it will help 
it's just a lost control. So if you already have lost the control, potentially encryption can help. We're getting the, the, the sign here that you got a hard stop. I appreciate you coming on board, but quick, couple quick final questions. You, you happy with Splunk? Yes, of course. They're doing a good yes. job for you? Yeah. Um, and then finally, just kind of comment, uh, general comment on network function virtualization. You guys looking at that at all? Is it relevant? Yes, so we have a project on NFV because we think that the telco environment will shift from these proprietary hardware and software pieces from the vendors to software. At the moment, we, we, we are working on the project since a year in the cloud environment, but there are, there are some issues with performance, integration, or orchestration, and all this stuff showing up, but there is no way back. There is no way back to the specific dedicated hardware yeah. from vendors. It will be software at one point in time. And final, final, final question is, <laughs> what's your goals for the year at Swisscom? You've got a lot going on. You have one thing you want to nail down and achieve this year. What's, what's your, your, your goal this year? So the goal this year is uh, this cloud security still there. So we will announce uh, in, in October with Intel together the first provider using uh, trusted computing on a broad base. So we did this for a year. And second is we work on threat intelligence very heavily. So these are the two major goals that we're in. Super exciting, I wish we had more time. Um, thank you for spending uh, time out of your day to share your insights on thank what you're you working on. Love the iPhone uh, malware thing. Certainly very training there, a lot of stuff going on. Android, iPhone, kind of 50-50, that's good data. Um, and great insights into the collaborative approach. Again, this is, you're on the front lines, so appreciate your time. This is theCUBE, getting the data and sharing that with you in a very secure way here inside the, <laughs> the, the, the Cube here at Splunk.com, live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break.